are about to get underway. Edwards with the face mask. Was out for two weeks, missed the last two games of the Big East Tournament. She is back and came back with a vengeance with that double-double. Well, both Paige and Aliyah had double-doubles. As you see, UConn starting out in a man-to-man -man defense. And keep your eye on number two in orange, DeAsia Fair, one of the most prolific scorers in the history of women's college basketball. Here's Fair with the floater. Offensive rebounding is something that Syracuse holds its hat on, but it's UConn basketball as we take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. Sophie Burroughs, the freshman, gets her first start since mid-November. That's because Elena Rice, who usually starts at a guard spot, is out, suffered a concussion in their win against Arizona and the usual starting five for UConn. Yeah, that's so tough because Rice played over 30 minutes. She has grad transfer experience as well. Great start. For UConn, it's K.K. Arnold, the freshman. K.K. Arnold, she is explosive in terms of her ability to score the basketball. And for her to hit the first shot speaks volumes, taking that lid off and that comfortability shining through for the freshman. On the baseline, there's Latham, a terrific freshman for the Orange. And Paige Beckers coming up with the rebound. Tore her ACL in a pickup game before the season even started last year. First time in two years she's played in a postseason. Edwards looking for someone. It's Paige Becker's always a good option. Rebound taken down by Woolley. What are the Aussies on this team? Well, Syracuse is going to show a lot of different variations of their zone. 2-3, two, a 1-2-2, two, two, and sometimes a matchup where they'll run through with the cutters. They were working on that yesterday in practice as well as in shoot-around today. But UConn's going to try to pass out of that. Woolley knocks it down. The junior from Brisbane, Australia, who is one of the players who came over with head, co head coach Felicia Leggett-Jack from the University of Buffalo. Felicia Leggett-Jack is an alum from Syracuse class of 89 and scored over 1,500 points for the Orange. Edwards tied up. The possession arrow keeps it with the Huskies. There is Coach Jack, as they call her. What a great job she has done. Second year here in charge was the ACC Coach of the Year and grew up in Syracuse. She said just down the hill from campus. And one of the, her goal was to get up that hill. Right. She got a basketball scholarship, was a tremendous player there as well. Absolutely. And also spent seven years as an assistant coach at Syracuse until 2000. And then now is back running things on the sideline at her alma mater. You love to see that. Yeah, she told us it was indeed her dream job. The fans here are ready to go with the palatable 6 p.m. local time tip-off. Woolley again for three. How about that? Mm. Well, Woolley yesterday in practice, her shot was not falling, and Coach Jack was on her saying, hey, we need you, especially without the services of Rice, who averages 10 a game. She got that message. Leah Edwards finishes on the other end for the Huskies. Here's Fair. Ball knocked away. Beckers forces a turnover. Nika Mule, the very talented point guard. Beckers with some flash. Just nice and loose on defense. Paige Beckers just attacked the gap. Shot knocked down by Burroughs, the other Australian in the starting lineup. Along with Woolley, who has the ball in her hands. Fair looking for it, but Woolley pulled up. She is red hot. Uh -uh. Woolley's so far having a good day. How about that? Right? Oh, I saw what you or did there, Fair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Aussie, Aussie, Aussie on that one, but a smart decision by Willie to pull up with Edwards down, waiting for her at the rim. Nothing but orange jerseys to get the Beckers miss. Syracuse off to a tremendous start. They've hit their last four shots. Yeah, they've been well connected on the offensive end. And don't forget, Syracuse is sixth in the country in offensive rebounding numbers, but they haven't needed that because they've been knocking in shots. Willie missed that one. And then she grabbed the basketball. Stays with UConn. Yeah, take a look. A kick out right there, Willie. See shade go under the screen, giving her enough shade and some space.
to let that thing fly from range. And then right here, stopping on a dime in transition. Smart pull up right there. You don't have to take it into the shot blocker inside in Aaliyah Edwards. She saved herself a couple feet and maybe a blocked shot by pulling up there right inside the elbow. Good drive by KK Arnold. That was just a tough bucket by the young freshman, KK Arnold. Oh, Willie is looking to pull the trigger. Berjau is in now. Number 34 in orange for Syracuse, one of the post players, a transfer from Michigan. Willie Floater. Edwards gets it. Arnold. Becker somehow was able to collect it. Well, she didn't get a good, clean catch on that, but it was on the way up anyway while she was fumbling it and was able to get it off and get it in there. But the pace of play in this game is amazing. Verjao throws up a three. She only has six in the entire season. KK Arnold. Nope. Really able to rescue it before it went out of bounds. And then Woolley coming out very aggressive, but that ticked off the rim. Edwards is down. The ball goes out of bounds. Edwards and Woolley a little slow getting up. We will check on them when we come back. What a start. 11 apiece. First time out. Uh oh, Chuck. Look at that. Time now for tonight's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. And what Coach Jack has done the year before she came, the only won 11 games, four in the conference, since then back-to-back 21 seasons. Well, she's been phenomenal. And yes, Gino Ariema, he did recruit her out of high school when he was assistant coach for Debbie Ryan at UVA. And he said, I've loved her energy. She was able to score the basketball, but she was rugged in the paint. And speaking of paint, Pam, UConn has eight of their 11 points in the painted area against Syracuse and their zone. And Gino Emma said, hey, sometimes you think about shooting out a zone, taking threes, but if you can score inside of a zone, that's when you get the defense in trouble in that way. Fair has only taken one shot and has not scored yet for Syracuse. Verjao across the post. And another foul has been called. So DeAsia Fair, the grad student who also came over from the University of Buffalo. Boy, what a career she has had. Fifth all time in Division One in scoring. And she's a very good chance of becoming number four today to pass Jackie Stiles. Absolutely. She's nine points away from that and ten to go over. A Becker's block. Paige Becker's flying out of nowhere. How about this block? Paige Becker's may have lost a step right there, but got there in time to send that one to the fifth row. Phenomenal airtime by Paige Becker's defensively. You think about her offensive prowess, but she's so long and lanky, and her anticipation skills are outstanding. We've already seen her get into the gap for a steal earlier in the game. Syracuse has missed five shots in a row. That one was tipped, so it's going to stay with the orange. Gino Oriema in his 39th year, 70 years old in two days. How about that? 70 <laughs> plus two days for Gino, who yeah. was feted with some nice t-shirts from his team on Saturday. We'll have more on that later. Burroughs with the miss. Yeah, I love the love that the team showed Gino and the birthday victory they had on Saturday against Jackson State. Edwards took steps. Good defense by Verjao. There is Gino Oriema. What a great staff he has as well. Only Tar Vanderveer has more wins. <laughs> That's it's five amazing. more than Gino. That's it. That's how close they are. Uh, Hall of Famer, 35 consecutive trips to the NCAA tournament. And that's just quite a phenomenal feat. The sustaining of the excellence here in stores has been outstanding. Fair with an air ball. But she's going to keep on shooting. Has a great handle. Was able to get around three defenders and get an assist. Oh, boy. But then 
the counter. Right back at you. And Junior Ariyama, he told us today at practice he wanted pace of play to be at the top of the list for a key. Push it down the other way. Even after made buckets by Syracuse, they're pushing with a pass. Woolley saved it in, but to Arnold. Perkins is back on defense. Edwards couldn't handle it. Good hustle, number one. Kennedy Perkins, a sophomore for Bolingbrook, Illinois. 23 minutes against Arizona in the first round. She did a great job, hit all four of her shots, but also a lot of hustle plays like that. And that's what you need. This is the time of the season where hey, X's and O's sometimes go out the window. Now it's your heart and your hustle and your want to. And that's what you have to show and prove. And an offensive foul. So a sweet 16 appearance is on the line. Georgia Woolley just picked up her second personal foul, so she gets subbed out. It would be, it would be remarkably, the 30th straight Sweet 16 for the Huskies, who were bounced in the Sweet 16 last year by Ohio State, who was beaten in the second round by Duke, who awaits the winner of this game. Tangled in web. Portland. <laughs> Tangled web right there, but Latham. Blocked by Mika Mule. Latham going in. That's the second time. Beckers took one away from her, and now it's Mule. Nika Mule with the chase down block right here. Latham thought she was free and easy. Nika Mule said, this is my last time playing here at Gamble. You're not scoring easily in transition on us here. Mule does have another year of eligibility, but has decided this will be her last season. Burrows with her second three of the game. Put Syracuse on top. This is how UConn was working against the zone during their practice. Get it into the high post area and work out from there. Ashley Shade, the freshman, coming off a career day. 26 points, including five threes against Jackson State. Well, she was outstanding. The floor was spaced perfectly for her to be productive and efficiently so on Saturday. Ties the game up, and now Latham working against Beckers. Verjao had it taken away, a little hesitation. That's all Arnold needed. And Edwards had lost Verjao right there. If she had been able to handle it, she probably could have scored easily in there. Beckers with a nice feed from Mule. And that's what you do. Take those shallow cuts against the zone right there at the Big East logo in the paint. And and now now pressure from the inside. Now. Nika Mule now has the most assists in the history of UConn. She has passed Mariah Jefferson. She was asked about how that would make her feel, and she said, I won't know until it actually happens. So now that's a post-game question for her. Yes, it has actually happened. All right, Jefferson, what a great player she was. Oh, Jeff. Because we, we all know uh, Brianna Stewart winning, winning four straight championships. So did Mo. Absolutely. Yep. That was their last championship in 2016. Shade has picked up the foul. Yeah, Nika Mule, do you talk to Gino Oriema? Sometimes he's not exactly effusive with his praise. But he loves Nika Mule. Oh, he loves her because she can set the table. She's an organizer. She's a coach on the floor and just understands her assignment. And she's had to change her role a couple of times for the Huskies, but she is adaptable and she has been tremendous. Fair has been held in check. She is still scoreless in this game. Ball bounces around to Perkins who gets it back to Fair. This was a concern for Oriema, the close of a quarter and how they would have to defend Fair. And, and also the offensive rebounds. Mule is on her, and that's a travel. Shot clock is off now for UConn. Coach Jack was on the sidelines in a stance during that possession, really wanted her team to be able to connect so now Mule is going to slow it down. Ice Brady in the game, number 25, a red shirt freshman. So if you stick it with their 1 2 2, and there's that soft spot. Mule over Latham. In and out. Ball goes out to Syracuse with three seconds left to go in the quarter.
see it fair. Chucks one up. She does for midcourt. De'Asia Fair left scoreless in the first quarter. Beckers has eight, UConn up two. Well, it's been all defense for the Huskies here at home. Right on the defensive end. And then Paige Beckers doing what she does in the paint. And crew, Gino has won over 88% of his games. He is over 1,000 games above 500 as a head coach. And one reason why he's got people like Paige Beckers and Aaliyah Edwards. Well, they have been a dynamic duo for sure. And when in the Big East tournament, when Aaliyah Edwards was injured with that broken nose, she heard it against Providence. Paige Beckers really missed her presence on the interior. So now to have her back, the synergy between the two is really incomparable. And when you look at what they were able to do on Saturday, both of them calculating double doubles, it's really been fun for them to stay connected. And you've seen Edwards be a facilitator. And I really love that role in her as well. We know what Paige can do. I mean, she has seven assists on Saturday to go along with 11 rebounds. A whistle and a foul upcoming against Syracuse. Pam Moore to Christy Winter Scott joining you tonight from UConn. The winner gets Duke in Portland in the Sweet 16. Latham, the freshman, has picked up her first personal foul. The Asia Fair still scoreless, 0 for 3 in the first quarter for Syracuse. Coming off a 32-point game against Arizona, the most points any Orange player has ever scored in an NCAA tournament game. Well, she was outstanding, and she only took six shots in the first half on Saturday, and she scored 11 straight by herself in the fourth. Ashlyn throwing some shade again. She had 26, a career high against Jackson State. She has been starting all year. Well, these freshmen have picked up some invaluable experience because they have six players who are out injured for the season. So they have had to really make some quick adjustments and grow up early and quickly. And Syracuse looking discombobulated on the offensive end. Ashlyn Shade has been fantastic in terms of her composure as a freshman. She understands that she is a floor spacer there on the strong side corner. Paige Beckers knows where to find her because she's there consistently. Shot ready, ready to lift and flick it. And she had not been shooting the three ball well until Jackson State, only 26% from distance in her five games before that. And she knocked down five of 11 against the Tigers, took a step there. That's a good defensive play by Burroughs. Now the Burroughs ran her off that three-point line and she picked up that pivot foot before the ball hit the deck. Mule just absolutely all over fair defensively. Syracuse likes to run that Iverson action and Anika Mule got a piece of that one. Mule's second block of the game. Latham looking for her first points. Edwards with a good defense forces another turnover. De'Asia Fair got hung up here. Nika Mule right there with a clean block as she tried to lift it from range where she shoots 38% from there, so. Four blocks already for the Huskies, and in this NCAA tournament full of stars, we have one here in DeAsia Fair. Shade again! Her third three of the game. She was nice and cozy right there in that same corner to knock in that triple, I'm telling you. You've got to get there early and contest in the shot pocket. It's an 11-0 UConn run. Syracuse has more turnovers than made field goals. Well, Syracuse can't settle for the shots that UConn is giving them. They need to take their shots. Beckers with the floater. Coach Jack has not elected to take a timeout. Beckers into double figures. And it's a 14-2 advantage. And paint points for UConn inside of the zone that Syracuse has presented so far. So they are destroying it from the inside out. Fair. 
away from Mule momentarily. Shot clock into single digits. Fair. Tough shot to get her first points of the night. Well, she had a crowded area right there. She may be diminutive on the outside, but she is a monster on the inside. That stops a 13-0 UConn run. Beckers thought about it, then got inside. Tremendous bounce pass over to Edwards. Beckers and Edwards are always on the same page. UConn is on a string, offensively and defensively, connecting the dots, training corner triples, and dropping dimes and buckets and floaters in the paint. I met with the TurboTax expert because I had two full-time jobs, lawyering and... Mia me. Count on me, Mia. I'll file your taxes for you with 100% accuracy guaranteed. Let a TurboTax full-service expert do your taxes as soon as today. You're not busy, are you? Heads up! Heads up! Game time. When you put on that uniform, there's a sense of pride. You're not just wearing your last name. You're representing everything that got you here. Your family, where you're from. Wearing that uniform makes a statement that you belong to something bigger. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Yeah, trick, I said what I said. I don't care, I paint the town red. Right horses are broken free from the fields. When my hair started to thin, I thought, am I going to have any hair left? After I gave birth, my hair wasn't even thinning. It was gone. As I got older, I couldn't grow it past my shoulders. Nutrafol has different formulas for all the different changes so many women go through. Within three months, my hair is significantly fuller. It's longer, it's thicker. My friends noticed it. I felt like a completely different person. Try the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand at Nutrafol.com. So why should we hire you? He's explosive, he's patient. Where do you see yourself in five years? The city is ready, the teams are ready, the NFL Draft. Welcome back to Storrs. A 10-point lead for UConn, but a 15-2 run has just been decimating for Syracuse on the defensive end. UConn has been able to just dissect and pick and choose their spots on the offensive end. They're attacking inside the painted area and have been full force in doing so. A 16-2 advantage in paint points, and it hasn't just been Aaliyah Edwards scoring those buckets. They've been able to get 10 toes down in the paint and apply pressure on the interior of Syracuse and their zone defense. Syracuse got off to a great start. You see they have eight offensive rebounds, but have not been able to stop UConn on the other end. And Syracuse has a 5-0 advantage on second chance points, but They've got to get their primary shots down and selected better. Fair getting it over to Woolley, who hit a couple of threes early. Beckers with the burst of speed takes it herself. And a foul upcoming on Syracuse. It's the second time Edwards has hit the court hard. Well, yeah, Edwards fell from a long distance there. Glad to see her pop right back up. 
Two fouls on Latham. Neither team has shot a free throw yet in this game. A lot of players have hit the deck, as yeah, you said, though. It's physical. been very physical, yeah, for sure. But it's March. So Latham comes out of the game. Kyra Wood checks back in. A Temple transfer. Edwards gets it over to Shade. Beckers. First offensive board, and she converts. Well, you saw Paige Beckers doing her work. When that shot was in the air, she just made her way right in front of the rim and snatched that one down. And that's what you have to do. Stay ravenous. You see Paige Beckers coming into the view and right into the paint. And she goes up with two high hands to corral that one down and stick it. KK Arnold has just picked up her second foul for UConn. The Huskies, like so many teams these days, have a very short bench. That's taken away. Edwards to Beckers. Saw Ice Brady on the baseline. Too, too strong off glass. Ball goes out of bounds. Stays with UConn. Well, it's so interesting. Gino Ariema was asked yesterday in the press conference, is Diana Taurasi a, a comparison to you for Paige Beckers? And he said, no, it's more Stewie. He said, she's not 6'4", that's the only difference, but they do the same things on the floor. He said, she's not 6'4", she doesn't have a seven foot wingspan like Stewie does, but they do a lot of the same things in the same way. And I thought that was very intriguing to think about. And it's a good comparison, and Becker's kind of like Stewie, kind of just floats around and then is absolutely lethal. Arnold goes yeah. out with the two personal fouls, and Mule comes back in. UConn has used just six players so far. Only Ice Brady off the bench. Nineteen seconds to shoot. That's Joe Vasily with the basketball, assisted tonight by Ken Nash and Katie Lukonic. So plenty of time here for UConn to work for a clean look. Getting it right down into that short corner. Now they can slip it. Edwards in one of her sweet spots, but couldn't get it to go. But now you know what you can get. If I'm Gino, I'm fine with that shot. You, you see how you can pick apart the defense and commit it to the basketball. Well, he picks up her dribble and then takes a relatively low percentage shot. She sends it home, and now Georgia Woolley has 10 points. She has been a high piece of high-frequency offensive production for Syracuse here in the first half. Becker's just a little bit too strong, but Shades gets him a second look. See, I love Edwards right there at the nail. Now she can pivot and spray the ball around. There you go. Page misses two in a row. Edwards couldn't come up with it cleanly. Another offensive board for Beckers. Brady, as the ball bounces around, Syracuse with active hands. The three, nailed by Sophie Burrows. Again, getting the start for Elena Rice, who is out after suffering a concussion in the second round game. Or the uh, first round game, pardon me. Good seal by Edwards. Oh, and she was covered up. This game is going to be one on the glass, and both coaches said as much. Right now, Syracuse has an eight to five advantage on offensive rebounds, where they're six best in the country. Beckers with the kick. He's got 14 points. Well, those long limbs came in great right there in that gap where she was able to get that outside hand to the ball line and be off to the races for an easy deuce for the Huskies. Misha Fair, just two points, one of five shooting, fouled on the perimeter. We take a timeout. Paige Beckers and UConn up by nine. Well, when you can steal and score, that is the pace of play that Gino... Now we get it back to Gamble. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. As we take a look at tonight's star stories brought to you by Honda. And boy, we had some stars. Paige Becker's really stuffing the stat sheet. Ashlyn Shade in this game, in the first round game, has is 8 of 16 from 3, 50%. Mm -hmm. Hello. And Nika Mule just doing everything. Every single thing. She is the consummate leader for this team, and she may do it in a non-vocal manner, but she's doing it, and they follow her lead in many ways. And she doesn't need to score a lot of points to impact the game. Lily Beckers everywhere. That's a hell ball. The possession arrow points in favor of the Huskies. Paige Beckers is shaking off that hard fall. The Gino Arema said that Paige Beckers is playing her best basketball here, especially in the postseason, of anyone in the country. And he meant it. And he said it with conviction, and he's right. I mean, statistically, you can look at it, and it's followed up. I mean, just in terms of her efficiency, not just the flat-out numbers she's averaging, which is well over 27, 28 points a game. 11 boards and 7 assists on Saturday for Paige Beckers. I like to call her PB with the J. She lets it fly. She just plays with such a tremendous swagger. The game was taken away from her with that ACL injury. But boy, I tell you what, she's been more than ready. Ira Wood called for a foul. Ice Brady couldn't convert on the inbounds. They got to get fair going. She only has two points in this game. Alicia Fair, as always, is right at the top of the, the scouting report, and we saw them today at shoot-around. You were at practice yesterday. A lot of attention to Fair. How do they get her more shots? I think they need to bring her off, right? I think right now it's tough for her because she's so short, right? So she's the primary ball handler, but I think they need to get her off of some weak side stagger screens instead to get her a touch. And Willie gets the basket, and we're... <laughs> About to see our first free throw of this game from either club. All right, here you see the nice front cut, the face cut gets you right to where you want to go, which is in the paint. And Wooly has been so aggressively attacking that area. She's knocked in her threes as well, but she has just had an all-around solid performance here in the first half. Georgia Wooly was the MAC freshman of the year a couple of years ago when she played at Buffalo for Coach Jack, where they went to a sweet 16. Here's a horn set. You see they tried to throw a little blitz there on Aaliyah Edwards when she caught it at the elbow, anticipating that offensive set from the Huskies. Made her give it up. Lily has half of Syracuse's 26 points. That's how effective she has been, the Aussie. Here's some extra defensive attention to the basketball right now that Syracuse is showing. Inside Beckers, turn, shoots, hits. And if we look at the shot chart in this first half, I want to know how many green dots are going to be on that Big East logo in the paint because that is the pressure cooker area that UConn has been attacking with consistency. Inside two minutes to go in the half. Shot put in by Sanaya Wilson. Wilson. A crick in her neck, did not practice yesterday, but Coach Jack said the kid's from Rochester. Yeah, she's she's good, she's good. She's a gamer, she's in. She says she could get hit with the brick and then yeah, have a crick in her neck. Like, that was yesterday, we're on to the next. She's ready to go today. Mule. Edwards hesitated just for a second and was fouled. <laughs> Paige Becker, she just knows where to go right here, taking a little shallow cut right inside the paint. They were working on it in practice, and they've been executing. It's one thing to work on. It's another thing to carry it over and execute. And then on the other side, Syracuse getting Wilson going in that pinch post. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90. NCAA championships culminating in Cleveland on ABC with the championship. And we got more games coming tonight. Yes, we we got Caitlin Clark Let's go. and Iowa coming up after us. And then mm. Juju and USC after that. Let's go. Juju so on that beat. Stuff going on. Uh, ESPN2 right now has Oklahoma and Indiana. So 
great time just to not basically just watch TV and not move. Ooh. Well, we've seen that move before, that little slow walker. Fair over to Wilson, who had no option, with Edwards in her face. Burrows from the outside. No, Becker settles under a minute to go. No second chance opportunities on the last couple of possessions for Syracuse. And give UConn credit for getting a body on and maintaining contact to disallow those extra possessions. Beckers elevates. Oh, wait. That was just cold. Straight up and straight down for Paige. Fair. Chucks it up over Mule. Another miss. Edwards ripped the ball away how from did, Wilson. How did Aaliyah Edwards get that? Wilson had position, and Aaliyah Edwards said, not today. The shot clock is off. The fans stand, and Beckers looks at Gino. He said, go. She does, and she hits it. Paige Beckers with 20 points. Check out tonight's most reliable team brought to you by Xfinity. It's Paige. Well, it's all Paige Beckers right now. She has 20 points. The rest of the Huskies, 19 points. She's dropping dimes everywhere. She's flying through the air with the greatest of ease, knocking in shots on second chance opportunities, but she's getting into the gaps and sending it the other way. UConn up big because of their defensive energy and attention to detail, but this is where all the shots have come from, from UConn. And they're right there inside that nail area at the foul line. That's where I said UConn needs to continue to attack that Syracuse zone, Pam. We're gonna check out tonight's game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. UConn had that 13 nothing run. And the Asia Fair at the bottom. This is huge. This is one of the most prolific scores again in the history of college basketball. She's just got two points. Yeah, but we saw what she did on Saturday in the second half, scoring 21 of her 32 points. 13 of those in the fourth quarter, including an 11-0 run of her own during that stretch. So she's definitely capable of catching fire. And she knows what's in front of her, a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. So she's going to definitely try to dial it up. But Paige Beckers has something to say about that. UConn steals it. Shade just passed it over to Mule, who puts up the three. And Nika Mule is the main reason why the Asia Fair has been shut down so far today, playing great defense, her primary defender. And they've done a good job of bumping off as well. Here comes the screen, and watch Paige right there, ready in the gap to switch. There, off iron, rebound taken down by Wood. Really got off to a great start with some threes. Turn around by Latham. Maybe all freshman team in the ACC this year. First top 100 recruit for Coach Jack at Syracuse gets it to within single digits. Absolutely, and that's a 10 to 2 advantage on second chance points. Syracuse, as we said in the first half, is sixth best in offensive rebounding in the country. Inside, Edwards kicks it out. Beckers could have shot. Instead, floats one and is fouled on the follow. And it's easier said than done because things happen in a bang bang way inside, but you got to turn and box. When that shot goes up, you can't be watching the basketball. You've got to turn and connect to a body and maintain that contact so Paige doesn't have a second crack at it. And that is the third personal foul on Kyra Wood. It sends Beckers to the free throw line where she is 85% on the season. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins on Thursday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on TBS and CBS. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. We are rounding out the Sweet 16 with games today, including this one. The winner gets Duke in Portland. And here's that. Oh, Albany's only a couple hours from here to go to Portland. <laughs> right. Hey, but I'm sure these fans will follow. It's sold out in here again. Really with the miss. Another rebound. Wood staying in there with the three fouls. Edwards defense. KK Arnold pulls it out. 
Smart decision there by the freshman to reorganize the offense. There they go once again. Now they can take that shallow cut. Page was right there, but there's Deja Fair on the other side, taking it coast to coast. Fair has missed eight of her nine shots in this game. She's, has, pardon me, has not gotten the free throw line either where she can do some damage. She's going to stay aggressive. That's not going to deter her from taking that next shot attempt. Shade likes to shoot from the corner. Nathan over Beckers. Edwards with very good position and somehow kept her feet in bounds. Here comes Mule. Shade. Steps in. There were no rebounders available for UConn on that one. So maybe a quick shot by Shade. And also on that previous possession by Syracuse, I, sh I thought that shot was a little quick as well. And now Syracuse trying to get into their horn set. Get that back screen, trying to get Latham free on the interior. Fair okay, just can't buy one right about now. UConn looking for its first field goal of this quarter. Deasia Fair, she showed such indomitable will in that fourth quarter after taking a really hard fall. That is thrown to Chris Daly. Oh boy, it's exactly mm, Gino, and his expression speaks a thousand words on that one right there, Pam. Ball goes back over to the orange. I'm going to throw it there. with the defense on Woolley. Tough. That's a really difficult shot. She did not have her legs underneath her. She was a locked leg when she shot that, had no lift. But give credit to the defense by Arnold there to be a disruptor of that rhythm of the mechanics on that shot. Good job by Wood to come out. Pardon me, Latham. Fair, there you go. Maybe that's enough to get her going. She missed her first four threes. All she needs to do is feel it sometimes, and then she gets herself in a rhythm. Coach Jack has said she's a monster once she gets going. Arnold, Shade, Beckers, got Latham to miss. UConn still looking for its first field goal of this quarter. Just a couple of Paige Becker's free throws. That's it. Deja Fair has the complete trust of Coach Jack. They have a really great relationship. And then Woolley hits the shot. She had 13 in the first half. Set up well by Deja Fair on that one. Drawing two to the basketball. And then flicking it on the pitch back pass to Woolley. UConn is led by as many as a dozen. That lead has been halved. Beckers. It's just where you want to be if you're Paige Beckers. And Gina wants her to be there. He's got to put it down. Burroughs, the freshman, getting the start today because Elena Rice is unavailable. That's an 8-0 Syracuse run. We got a ball game. But Coach Jack said, we didn't come this far just to come this far. And boy, an 8-0 run right now forces UConn to call a timeout. Triples are falling. And then the little fanciful ball handling ability, an easy mid-range deuce for Wooly, and then a corner triple to add to it. Welcome back. Syracuse has cut UConn's lead down to three. Well, they've gotten the ball inside. They've been able to get easy transition buckets, even if it's a triple from Deja Fair finding the bottom of the net on that one. And if they wall up on her, she's able to find Willie. And then the extra passes that have been made here, Pam, to start the second half have been right on time and on target. UConn led by 11 after one half of play, but UConn no field goals in the first five minutes and change of this quarter and three turnovers, just two free throws from Paige Beckers. That has been it offensively. In, in that first half, UConn turned it over five times, but Syracuse was able to score 10 points off as Paige gets a nice dime there. So after the timeout, 
Beckers gets the lead back up to five points. Edwards with the uh, make on the Beckers assist. Fair had it taken away by Mule. Coach Jack was wondering where the contact was there, but like Nika Mule just had quick hands there to take it away and deflect it. Beckers goes behind her back, floats it over to Shade. Yukon with a nice response. Phenomenal spacing and patience and composure on that last possession. Fair. Nothing doing, Edwards. It is going the other way as we take another timeout. Yukon with a strong response to that 8 0 run by Syracuse. Extra passes being made to that weak side by Paige Beckers to Edwards. And then Beckers right outside. No shade for shade in the right hand side of the court. What's up, everyone? Come on in. I got a hundred ways that I could make you look. Wow. You cannot read me, I ain't no page in a book. But there's a hundred ways that wow. I could make you look. State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Cut its neighbor. That's what I said, neighbor. Getting closer. Here at Papa John's, we know our stuff. So try our garlic epic stuffed crust pizza. Made with our iconic garlic sauce flavor. Mixed with cheese and hand stuffed into that Papa John's original dough. No one stuffs a crust like Papa John's. For years, they competed against each other. But every four years, they take on the world. They represent our schools and our country. We are proud to say, Olympians are made here. To advance the future of golf, PGA of America chose T-Mobile for business with a 5G-powered innovation hub to analyze player performance and expand coaching tools. Take your business further with America's largest 5G network. Roll up to Easter with fast and easy drive up. What you wanna see? Let's go. Doing this so naturally. I'm gonna be a fantasy. Easy like one, two, three. Yes, yeah, easy like one. Drive up is fast, easy, and always free. Only at Target. From the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power, the Ego Power Plus Blower reaching an incredible 765 CFM. And it runs up to 90 minutes on a single charge, exclusively at Lowe's, Ace, and Ego authorized dealers. Why are you here? To find a place to rent. I know renters when I see them. Apartments.com. We can help you get into a lovely one bedroom, two bedroom, I don't want to presume anything. Apartments.com, the place to find a place. Time now for Get More, brought to you by Geico. And Let's go back to 2016 when these two teams met in the national championship game. It was the fourth of four in a row for the Huskies. Four straight most outstanding player awards, two for Stewie in the final four. Morgan Tuck, 19 points and seven rebounds in that game. That had to doubly sting because Stewie grew up in the Syracuse area. <laughs> but look at this. They have not played since 2021, which was in the NCAA tournament in the bubble. UConn has won 26 straight games in this rivalry. Well, that is outstanding. But they also had a scrimmage earlier in October, on October 27th. And both teams said that they have changed so much since that juncture, but they understand who they are. And what a great block inside. It was Kyra Wood getting her hand on that block, and AZ Fudd played in that yeah, scrimmage and, and, and hit over 30 points. Yeah, she had seven out of 15 threes in that game. And I spoke with AZ yesterday about that, and she said, oh, it was a while ago, but we didn't play good defense, and Paige didn't play in that scrimmage. We were just different. Beckers going to do it all by herself, flips it up over her head and draws the foul. And AZ Fudd, one of those players who are injured and on the bench. 
And what a talent she is from the DMV, of yes. course, the Washington, D.C. area, and only able to play two games this year before being shut down. Yeah, it's, it's just a, a sad state of affairs for her in that regard. But I tell you what, she's ahead of schedule. I had a long chat with her yesterday at their practice, and she's ready to go. She's doing the work. And they have six players down. She understands the assignment of getting back, and it's going to be fun to watch her back on the court next year. On ESPN, more NCAA women's basketball. Second round action. Caitlin Clark and Iowa takes on West Virginia. Follow that with Juju Watkins and USC. Kansas, this is a team that's really come back. All games are also available on the ESPN app. So Becker's here. Fair here, and we get Caitlin Clark at the top of the hour. And Juju after that. Listen, a lot of my hoop friends have their phones on Don't Disturb because they're going to be watching some great March Madness. And Stanford, boy, Iowa State, give them all the credit in the world, coming back from 20 down to Maryland. And then taking Stanford to overtime. How about that? Kiki coming up with a big game, and Malaysia Full Wiley, one of the many great freshmen out there in the country. And I could not fall asleep after watching all of that. Last night I was screaming, I was hoping I didn't lose my voice, but excited for Stanford to be moving on to yet another Sweet 16. And Wooly. Stanford going to play NC State in the Sweet 16 out in Portland. Shade. See if Syracuse can settle in right here. Use a little of the clock. Or get, or not, the ball to number two. Second three of the game for Fair. You have to stay in her space. Yesterday at practice, you know, Ariema said, you've got to be in the picture. If you can't see the camera, you're not going to be in the picture. Nobody was in the picture there defensively. What a quick move by Beckers. 25 points for Paige, had 28 yesterday, or yesterday, two days ago, in the first round against Jackson State, and here comes D. De'Asia Fair is not fair. Right here, a little pitch back pass, get it right back to her. Slashes in that three, and then right here gets by, not one, not two, but three lines of defense to get the N1, and she's giving herself a little self-encouragement, which is sometimes the best. And with that free throw, De'Asia Fair has now passed Jackie Stiles and is fourth all-time in NCAA scoring, and Kelsey Mitchell next on the list. Kelsey Mitchell's Looking to the right and to the left and seeing De'Asia Fair right there behind her on her heels. Phenomenal. So two of the top four scorers in the history of women's college basketball are playing in the NCAA tournament. Arnold with the bucket, not just playing in the tournament, but you're going to get to see Caitlin after this game. I mean, you're just outstanding. Fair forcing things. <laughs> How did she make that shot, though? I know it didn't count. It didn't count, but she got it to go. Listen. Come on now. We saw this in the first round against Arizona, where Fair took a while to get going. But take a look at this. Well, this is Fair. Look at De'Asia Fair right here. Hear the whistle and just throw it up to the basket, and it went straight in. <laughs> just incredible. Little bit. That's what I call her. <laughs> She's just tough. Listed at 5'5". Five, five. On the outside. Somehow kept her balance. I don't know how she did that either. Now, here comes some fancy stuff. Beckers knocks it away. I'm saying it's off, off page. Let's take a look. Deja Fair trying to regather it, and it looked like it was off the inside. Yeah, that's, a, left leg. that's a veteran move, though, Beckers. You point the other way and help the officials buy it. Absolutely. Latham couldn't keep it in. Yeah, this is just a two-possession game right now. Look at Coach Jack is doing. Jumping Jack's over there on the sideline, imploring her crew 
to be in a stance with high hands. She's got her hands up, too. That zone has been a menace for many opponents this season. Shot clock winding down, and then it's tipped away. UConn's not going to get a shot off, or at least not a good one. Shot clock violation. That's good play by Woolley to tip it away into the backcourt. Meanwhile, Syracuse has four turnovers in the last three minutes, but they're outscoring UConn by five in this quarter. Connecticut with just 11 points so far in this third. Yeah, and it's not because they've taken bad shots. They just are missing the shots that they were making in the first half. Nothing has changed. Fair starting to feel it. Woolley misses wide right. Beckers comes up with another rebound, and the shot clock is off. Let's see if she gets in a two-man game here with Edwards to close the third. Beckers working on Woolley, kicks it out. Shade from the corner. Ashlyn Shade just beats the buzzer to get the lead back up to nine. UConn playing tough here at Three home. Shot is Paige under Beckers review. kicking it out to the corner to Slim Shady. Ashlyn Shade putting it down through the net. He's like our grandpa. Oh. Happy birthday, Grandpa. <laughs> On Saturday, it was Gina Oriama's 70th birthday, and the team all picked out photos on their own and made T-shirts. And Gino, being the good sport he is, <laughs> he got a good laugh at it. Hey, listen, he looks like the character on Up, man. He, he just has to go I mean, ahead and accept it. I don't think he's thrilled <laughs> so with that, but, he hates but it. it's but true. It's great. <laughs> and the winner of this game sport. will get to take on Duke in Portland in the Sweet 16. Duke pulling off the upset of Ohio State. Yesterday, Cam Ward and Christy, you know, Scott joining you. Paige Becker is hitting the shot. UConn missed its first six shots of the third quarter. Since then, they've hit six of their last ten. Well, they've calmed down, right? You see the shots falling. They were knocking. They were knocking down that first half, and they weren't making the same shots. It makes it difficult confidence-wise, but they've been able to stick with it. And players like Georgia Woolley hitting from the outside will keep Syracuse in this game. The Aussie now with 18 points. Syracuse sticking with their zone, and you see Aliyah Edwards right there creeping around the nail. Once she gets it there, she can go to work. Puts it in with her off hand. Well, it gives you options when you put the ball right there in that soft spot of the zone. Another three ball from Sophie Burrows. Burroughs has come up huge. She's knocked in a handful of threes now to stay right in this game. Burroughs five of seven from distance. Starting today for Rice out with the concussion. Mule saw a little bit of daylight, then kicks it out to Paige Beckers. Paige has 30. A slight work from Paige Beckers. But Fair says, I got you right back. Two of the most elite shooters and scorers in the country right now, Beckers and Fair. Edwards wanting it in the post and then switches over. But there's Edwards sizing up on the interior. She was there for a hot second, didn't match that angle. Now on the baseline. Edwards hit a couple of shots from the elbows on Saturday. She's got to get that extension on those jumpers. Fair maybe forcing things a little bit. Held ball. Possession arrow stays with the orange. Well, this sequence had me leaning all over you over here, Pam. A little pitch back pass. Another triple for the orange. And then this is what De'Asia Fair does well. She sizes up the defense and finds viable options, and the viable option for UConn has been Paige Beckers. 30 points so far. Officials say Syracuse ball again.
Burroughs inbounding with 21 seconds to shoot. Joe Basile over at the scorer's table to make sure the timing is correct. And we're good to go. In UConn right now, they have a 30 to 10 advantage in paint points. And you would think that Syracuse would maybe try to attack that area. And there they go. Rolls off the rim for Fair. Ball on the ground. And Latham comes out of the scrum. 11 offensive rebounds now for Syracuse. A 10 to 6 advantage in second chance points. Beckers defending Fair. And they get Paige. That's only her first foul. Syracuse so trying to get back to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2016 when they played UConn in the championship game. And UConn, that just doesn't even look like it's possible going for their 30th straight Sweet 16. Right, they're 30 and 2 in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Shot clock winding down for Fair, guarded by Arnold. The fifth year player against the freshman. Edwards boards it. DeAndre Fair was off balance on that one. Still tried to have the flick of the wrist. And now they're trying to blitz a little bit. And we saw that towards the end of that first half. Shade again. That's her spot. Hit one there at the end of the third quarter and just got another one. She's got 17 points. The lead is 10. She's just fierce with it. Staying confident. Only a freshman, and she's out here doing damage after coming off of a career on 26 on Saturday. Beckers protects it. That's a reach-in foul on Burroughs. Such a, such a big bucket. Nika Mule, she knew if I get it inside, they're going to sink in a little bit, and that's going to give Ashlyn Shade time. So that's just a huge ice-breaking bucket and a momentum-changing triple for the Huskies. You know, Coach K, retirement looks good on you. Who needs championships when you can look at birds? Uh, Coach, I'm looking at a goat. A hospital bill for 1200 bucks? Gap! Did you say gap? He's talking about the expenses health insurance doesn't cover. But with Aflac, uh -huh. you can get money to help close that gap. Aflac, huh? Aflac! Gap! Aflac! Gap! Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover at Aflac.com. I get this glow? I get ready with new Olay Indulgent Moisture Body Wash. It smells amazing and gives my skin over the top moisture. From dull to visibly glowing in 14 days. What? The model has Major so skin. See the difference with Olay. PNG. Here at Papa John's, we know our stuff. So try our garlic epic stuffed crust pizza. Made with our iconic garlic sauce flavor. Mixed with cheese and hand stuffed into that Papa John's original dough. No one stuffs a crust like Papa John's. Gator life. Rapid rehydration with a specialized blend of five electrolytes and lower sugar. Hydration for every athlete, forever. Amelia, turn off alarm. Amelia, weather? 70 degrees and sunny today. Amelia, unlock the door. I'm afraid I can't do that, Jen. Why not? Did you forget something? protein shake. The future isn't scary. Not investing in it is. You're so dramatic, Amelia. Bye, Jen. 100 innovative companies, one ETF. Before investing carefully, read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and more in prospectus at Invesco.com. File 100% free with TurboTax Free Edition. Roughly 37% of taxpayers qualify. Form 1040 and limited credits only. See how at TurboTax.com. That's me! been battling every single yeah. game. This speaks to how tough the Western Conference is. Clippers, Sixers, Suns, Nuggets on ESPN. The 
The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Gina Auriemma has 11 national championships in his. The last one, though, coming in 2016 when they beat Syracuse. They have made 35 straight tournaments. Most wins in this tournament all time. 30 straight seasons is a top three seed. They are number three this year. Remember, LSU was a three last year when they won it all. Right, and at practice yesterday, I was walking through the building and just to see all the pictures over the time that he has been here, came here and just changed everything. 11 titles for Gino Ariema, and you say it, but when you see it documented with pictures and players, Rebecca Lobo, Diana Taurasi, Maya Moore, Sue Burt, Stewie, I mean, it, the list goes on and on, and it's just been such a phenomenal journey for this program. Edwards able to rid herself of a defender to get a shot off, and then was fouled on the follow. I saw that Diana Taurasi was watching the game on Saturday with her family, and well, they all come back in such a high level of regard for not just the program, but Gina Ariema, Chris Daly, who has also been on staff for a long time with Gino as well. The entire time, Alyssa Latham just picked up her third foul and then UConn gave it up. Burroughs with the miss and then a foul on the floor. Sophie Burroughs, the freshman Australian, has hit five threes. She had never hit more than three in a game all season. So she's answered the bell, getting the start for Elena Rice. And so three boards and two assists as well for Burroughs. So she's coming up big in all areas for Syracuse. But they need some big buckets right now. When you need a big bucket, you give it to De'Asia Fair. <laughs> Nika Mule admits that she fouled Fair. That is three on Mule. She's so herky-jerky with her movements. And if you're a great defender, you're going to bite. And De'Asia Fair counts on that. So she knows exactly how to bait you into moving out of her way so she can see free and clear and get a bucket attempt. Fair looks over to Coach Jack. They have a very close relationship. And then Fair, that's brilliant. She drew another foul. This time it's Arnold. That's number three on KK, who picked up two in just 10 minutes in the first half. And three fouls on Arnold. talking about that relationship with Coach Jack and De'Asia Fair. De'Asia Fair is the oldest of four kids. And she gets tagged right there on the shot. <laughs> Take a look. There was about 13 seconds left on the shot clock, and De'Asia Fair tries to pull and gets tagged on the shooting hand. She'll head to the line. And this is huge because that is the fourth foul on Nika Mule, who has been the primary defender on Fair. Mule playing her last game here at Gamble because she is not going to come back and use her last year of eligibility. And also, Aaliyah Edwards. This is her last time here in Gamble as well as she has put her name in the hat for the upcoming WNBA draft on April 15th. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. There gets a couple. The lead is eight for UConn. It's all about stops and scores right now. When you're coaching, you do a shell drill and get four consecutive stops. Oh boy, Nika Mule she is just sense. fouled out of the game. And you see the assistance for Gina Wariema keeping him at bay. So 
Neal did not score today, but five assists. Let's take a look at this fifth foul. Here you see Nika Mule with the basketball right here and that extension and connection. Pushing off Wooly yeah, for a fifth foul. You can't do that. Can't do it, baby. That's a foul. Ah, uh, that's a tough one. The Asia Fair has 16 points, but is only five of 18 from the floor. She is heated up here in the second half, so Mule's out. Now Paige Beckers gets the assignment defensively. She's been the one to switch off on her after any screening action or DHO dribble handoff actions. And she's also taller than Mule. Ball goes right into the hands of Latham, but she couldn't put it in. <sighs> right down there in the trenches. You gotta get your body balance. Timeout taken by UConn, up eight. Nika Mule, who is from Croatia, has played on some Croatian national teams and has set all sorts of records, single season school record, single game record, and earlier in this game today, now has the all-time career assist record at UConn, so a brilliant career. No, no question about it. She was a member of the Big East All-Tournament team just a week and a half ago, and just the a reliable play is under review on the back floor. So everyone has the capabilities, but collectively, she is a big difference maker and an impactful leader for this team with all of her invaluable experience. So we'll see what that looks like for the last four minutes of this one. So the officials are looking at this play. Oh, got a hand up that got Wooly in the head. And I saw Coach Jack saying she hit her in the face as she was running up the floor, and that's what she was discussing. That's what she was talking about. You see Paige Beckers right here putting the ball on the deck, but it's that right hand that just extends out. They're trying to deem if that was excessive contact or just merely a basketball play and incidental. Yeah, there's Coach Jack saying she hit her right in the face. Joe Vasili and Ken Nash over there taking a look. Willie the junior who played for Coach Jack at Buffalo, as did the Asia Fair, and came over along with Sanaya Wilson. But the relationship. We have Lisa Mattingly as our uh, rules analyst, has uh, been an official at several Final Fours. Lisa, what do, what do you see here? Hey, y'all. Well, I'm, I think that it's incidental contact. You, I think the defender probably grabs her arm, maybe gives a little recoil there, but uh, I don't have this as anything else. Right here, you're going to see five kind of grab her arm like that. Seems like to me that that's just uh, not much to it. She's trying but to free herself. Yeah. And just trying to get her arm back into its natural yeah. position. So we'll see that, if the That little officials... extra, though, that little extra there at the end might be something. Are the officials taking a look at the replay. Paige Beckers tonight with 30 points. Her ninth 30-point game of her career, fifth this season alone. Let's see what they come up with here on, on Paige Beckers and what that means for UConn to now have Nika Mule out of the game. They already have a tight rotation with six players out for the year with injuries for the Huskies. So you've got to be on your P's and Q's and stay disciplined without Nika Mule's presence. There is no penalty on the play. The timeout will begin now. All right, so Joe Vasili agrees with what Lisa Mattingly saw. So no, no excessive Force there by Paige Beckers. So, a 
timeout now with UConn up 63-55. As we take a time out on the floor, we want to graphically remind you of how popularity of the sport has exploded. LSU and Iowa, almost 10 million people watched that championship last year for the first time on ABC, almost doubling what it was the year before. And we are expecting record numbers again this year with ABC having the national championship. And we remind you, coming up next, when this game is over, Caitlin Clark and the rest of her Iowa team will be taking on West Virginia. They can, they can disrupt you defensively. They like to press and all that other stuff. So that's going to be a sold out Iowa City coming up. Yeah, how about that? And Iowa, they have sold out 30 of their 32 games during the regular season. And Caitlin Clark and her squad, Lisa Bluter, has done just a tremendous job in that community. Sold out Kinnick Stadium, 55,656 fans early in October. Ready for it. Willie going for the steal, but Becker's recovered. Tried to get it inside to Edwards. Good defense by Syracuse, but Edwards just tied up there. Coach Jack was saying she got a piece of her arm on that one, and emphatically, non-verbally saying, and vocally saying that she may have gotten bumped out of that possession. Possession arrow keeps it with UConn. Big possession here in terms of momentum. If Syracuse can get a stop and score here, that could change the whole dynamic of this game. Arnold gets it over to Edwards on the baseline. She took steps. Well, there's half of what Syracuse needed. They needed that stop. Now, can you come down here and capitalize on getting the dirty work done on defense? Beckers on fair. Steps back. The three hit the side of the backboard, but the rebound was collected by the orange. Another three. Too far. Edwards fouled on the way down. And Kyra Wood is shaken up. Really hard fall by Wood. Well, wow, Paige Beckers did a great job defensively on Deasia Fair right there. She was giving her all the fakes that she could take, and she didn't bite on any of them and kept a hand in her face. Kyra Wood now has four fouls. Stays out there for the orange. Shade. Ashley Shade has been magnificent this weekend. A solid bucket by the freshman. Ashlyn Shade coming up huge for the Huskies. Career high 26 against Jackson State in round one. She's got 19 tonight. Inside three minutes. Fair. Big bucket. Oh, my God. Well, that's what happens when you play underneath the screen on DeAsia Fair. If you want fair, go to the carnival. <laughs> She's just not fair with her ability to get a bucket. Tipped by Burroughs. Woolley. Burroughs wants it for three. And she nails it. Sophie Burroughs, a new career high, 18 points. And we have a four point ball game. Oh my, watch this read right here. DeAsia Fair calculates it and sees that she has just enough space to let it fly and drop in the bucket. And then Burroughs with yet another three. And she has been outstanding in terms of her 
traction on the offensive end that Syracuse has needed in the absence of Rice, who's been out this game with a concussion. Rice played 30 minutes a game, 10 points, five boards. And she has more than made up for her absence, and she was sick to her stomach that she couldn't play today. She wanted so much to be here on the floor with her teammates. Coach Jack's team has been down by as many as 12 points in this game. Now it's a four-point deficit and some pressure. Full court press here, man to man. But now Arnold finds some space and some daylight to push it forward. Wisely pulls it out to re-establish their spacing. Beckers fumbled a little bit by Brady and another turnover fair, two on one. Sends it back to Woolley, big three. Rims out, Edwards couldn't hang on, it's Syracuse basketball. Wow, the Syracuse defense getting their hands in the passing lanes and giving them a chance. Regina Arima said, Hey, if De'Asia Fair misses a shot, that's fine. But if they get it back, that's trouble for us. And they're going to get the possession back right here once again. Look at the offensive rebounds. 15 of them for Syracuse and 12 second chance points. That's a difference maker, especially here at this juncture. Out of bounds play is under review. So another review to see who this is off of. It was initially called off UConn and Syracuse's ball. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. off of Edwards' left hand. Well, Ice Brady hits it here. But then watch right there. You see her fingers got a piece of it, and the ball changed trajectory right here. You can probably see it right there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Clear. So the officials will take a look and also make sure the, that the clock is where it should be. Again, it was originally called Syracuse basketball. going to stay here with Syracuse. Now can you execute? And everyone thinks it's all about the shot on inbounds plays, whether it's sidelines or on the baseline. But guess what? It's about setting solid screens and coming to meet passes. And then, yes, the shot. You want it to be the one that you want, not the one that UConn wants you to take. The call, is the call on the floor is confirmed. Syracuse ball, the clock remains at 155. All right, so it was indeed confirmed. 20 seconds on the shot clock now for the Orange. And Coach Jack said, listen, we need to remember who we are and not think about who they are. So we'll see if that thought process resonates with her students right now. Off the inbounds. Latham makes it a two-point game. It's an 8 nothing Syracuse run. Most of the fans that sold out Campbell are on their feet. Beckers, little hesitation and hits. Big time players step up in big time moments. Paige Beckers showing you who she is. Fair, the foul. <laughs> On the inbounds right here, all you do is just stay open, get a great shot. Latham nails it. Calm, 
cool and collected. And speaking of those three C's, there's one right there. Paige Becker's getting that bucket to go. So she sized up the defense and shot that over two of the orange. Mitchell on the all-time scoring list. I'm sure she doesn't care about that. She'd love to have that free throw back. It's a three-point game with a minute to go. Beckers, short, rebound, orange. Woolley to Fair. Does not have numbers. It's taken away by Shade, and Beckers immediately called the timeout. Shade, who has been an offensive weapon, comes up with a great defensive play. So let's get back to L. Duncan before we wrap this thing up. Pam, I don't want to overwhelm anybody, but there is more of this on the way. Number one Iowa in action, taking on number eight West Virginia in seven minutes from now. Kate Martin in her final game at Carver. She was fantastic in the second round, 15 points. 14 boards, number one seed Iowa, and Caitlin Clark still on the way, but we are buckled in for this one, Pam. On the granting of the timeout. All right, uh, we got so much to go, and yeah, Kate Martin is tremendous for Iowa. And look at the streaks that are on the line here for UConn. Last loss at home in an NCAA tournament, 1993, so long ago that Rebecca Lovo was a sophomore <laughs> at UConn. Yeah. And they are trying that? to keep that Sweet 16 streak alive. They do have the basketball. You take a look now, Syracuse down three. The game clock will be reset to 50.6 when the timeout was granted. They're gonna put six tenths of a second back onto the clock. All of this is happening without Nika Mule and her services as she fouled out. With about four minutes and 42 seconds left in this fourth quarter, Pam. And Seamlessly, Paige Beckers has stepped up huge. Ashlyn Shade as well, hit a big bucket. Can they get one more right here, though? And since Mule has gone out of the game, Syracuse has outscored UConn 14 to one. Accentuating how important she has been to them. Still a one possession game, so Syracuse is not fouling. Smart. Beckers over to Arnold. Got it to roll in. Pick Arnold, the true freshman. triple everybody in gamble they were already on their feet but on this one all hands in the air kk arnold the true freshman with her first points of the quarter how big was that one of the first people to come out to greet her was nika mule from the bench gets the lead up to six points we talked to Gino Oriema after shoot around today, and he was talking about KK Arnold, how he loves her demeanor. He can mess around with her. He can be his cynical self, his sarcastic self, and he loves the way she responds. And boy, that was a response on the floor. Absolutely. And then the birthday shirts and all of that. It's really sweet to see that kind of relationship between coaches and players and twin, where have you been, and all that with the up character. <laughs> when it comes time to winning, know what to do. Syracuse advances the ball with the timeout. The 
pinned down. Trying to get the ball back to De'Asia Fair. Here she comes off the floppy action. The two screens on the block. Beckers wearing Fair like a shirt. De'Asia misses the first one. And then it skips away from Latham. And the officials say it stays with Syracuse. 14 and a half to go, however. The freshman Sophie Burrows inbounds. Woolley for three. Nope. Edwards slams in for the rebound and a travel call oh. as Beckers and Edwards collided. Well, here's the shot, and then on the rebound, a lot of bodies in the air. Oh, yeah. Edwards and Paige Beckers looked like they both had it, and that's why they whistled that one a travel call. Both of them had the ball. Woolley heaves it just off the back rim, and then Beckers was fouled as she grabbed the rebound. And the celebrations have started in stores. Becker's gesturing to the student section behind her. Yeah. And this place has gotten a lot more decibels. But this is a Syracuse team coming in here. UConn not only wins second round games, they usually win them by a lot. But Syracuse with this great comeback. But they are running out of time as we take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. And Paige Becker's 32 points, but also being effective defensively. She has another double-double, 10 rebounds and six assists, and came up with that huge board right there to seal this game. Well, you knew that she was going to come and supply everything that the Huskies needed, and she needs a little more juju from the student section, and she's imploring them to carry it on as they try to close out this win. 32 big ones here for Paige Beckers who has just been exceptional in terms of her composure in big moments. And that's just what you've expected from her, and you shouldn't be surprised at it. Becker's also with four steals on the night. Just got it into Edwards, who was fouled immediately by Latham. This will be for Syracuse, the close of a spectacular season. Coach Jack taking her alma mater to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2021, and being able to coach DeAsia Fair, with whom she has a very special relationship. DeAsia coming in with some issues with her family and overcoming a lot of anxiety. And Coach Fair, she says, is more like a mama and a best friend to her. Absolutely. And De'Asia Fair, you see the emotion on her face, but she has three younger siblings, and all of her siblings call her mama. And she has just been a stalwart of strength. So a brilliant career for De'Asia Fair ends tonight in stores, UConn will take on Duke in Portland. Gino and Coach Jack, Mutual Admiration Society tonight. De'Asia Fair passed both Jackie Styles and Kelsey Mitchell, now third all time in points. And we will see UConn out west to take on Duke. What a fight it was for Syracuse.
down a dozen at one point and just came up a little bit short. So for Christy Winter Scott and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Pam Ward as we say so long. Thank you, DeAsia Fair. Great, great career. Let's get you to Iowa City. Well, the buzz in the building has never been better. Caitlin Clark has captivated, motivated, and elevated the game. And tonight, one last dance on her home floor in front of her home crowd. Her most famous two-step has already made a mark. Her legacy reaches a much larger footprint. Welcome to the NCAA Championship presented by Capital One. It's the last waltz at Carver Hawkeye for the woman from West Des Moines whose childhood aspirations have been realized representing Iowa in record-setting fashion. Tonight, the top scoring team in the country faces a stingy West Virginia defense. The winner moving on to the Sweet 16 to face Colorado. Then tonight, for the last time, the folks in Iowa City say hello to Caitlin Clark. And we welcome you courtside. I'm Beth Mowens, along with Stephanie White and Holly Rowe. So glad you could be with us on this historic night at Iowa. The winner of this one moves on to the Sweet 16. And Stephanie, in the midst of all this madness, perhaps most important for the Hawkeyes and Caitlin Clark will be maintaining their focus. Staying away from the emotion of the fact that this is the last time for Kate Martin, for Gabby Marshall, for Caitlin Clark, and a community that has embraced and rallied around this group to witness the greatness of their homegrown superstar inside of Carver Hawkeyes. And she is the most reliable player brought to you by Xfinity. Here's what she did the other night. Well, there was frustration early. Caitlin Clark struggled from the floor early in the ball game, particularly in that first quarter. You can see the frustration, but she got her teammates going. They rallied around her. And when she finally saw the ball go through the bottom of the net, there was nothing that could stop her turning it on in the second half to the tune of 27 points, 10 assists, and eight boards. Yeah, Holly Rowe, what an impact she has had.